St. Mary of Egypt and St. Zosimus of Palestine. St. Zosimus was born in the second half of the 5th century, during the reign of Emperor Theodosius the Younger. He became a monk in a monastery in Palestine at a very young age, gaining a reputation as a great elder and ascetic. At the age of 53, now a hero monk, that is, a priest monk, he moved to a very strict monastery located in the wilderness close to the Jordan River, where he spent the remainder of his life. This move was ordered to him in a vision by an angel, for, beforehand, he believed that he has achieved the pinnacle of asceticism. The angel told him to move to that monastery to learn of a better way. The monks there lived in absolute poverty, always mortifying their bodies on a diet of bread and water, and even these they used sparingly. They always prayed, whatever they were doing. It was the custom of that monastery for all of the brethren to go out into the desert for the forty days of the great land, spending the time in fasting and prayer, and not returning until Palm Sunday. Each one would do ascetic feats and fast alone, and would not inquire others how they fasted and what ascetic labors they performed during the land. During one such period, St. Osimus encountered a person who was black from the scorching sun and with hair as white as snow. He gave chase to the figure, thinking it will be one of his brethren, with the hope of obtaining a blessing from him. However, the stranger crossed a dried up brook, and Zosimus, tired and weary, started shouting after the stranger, begging him for a blessing. The stranger replied, saying, In the name of the Lord, forgive me, Father Zosimus, for I am a woman and am in a state of undress, but throw me one of your garments that I may cover myself and come before you. Upon seeing that she knew his name, he knew her to be clairvoyant, so he bowed down to her asking for her blessing. She, in turn, knowing that he is a priest, bowed to him, asking for a blessing too. This Mexican standoff lasted for quite some time. She then opted to pray silently for him, and St. Zosimus saw that mysterious lady was hovering in air during prayer. Immediately he was struck with fear, thinking that this might be a demon pretending to pray but she reassured him by making the sign of the cross over her brow, eyes, lips and breast. St. Zosimus wanted to know who she is and how she reached that level of sanctity, and after a lot of coaxing finally managed to persuade her to share her life story. She was born in Egypt. When she was quite young, she fled the loving home of her parents. She soon lost her virginity and she gave herself over to all manner of fornication. This she did for full 17 years. She only did this to please herself, not out of material need, for even when she was down on her luck, she would refuse money for sex. By trade, she was a spinner. One day, she saw a large group of people gathered by the docks. After inquiry, she learned that they were going to Jerusalem, to venerate the relic of the true cross. Seeing many sexy young lads in the group, she decided to go with them, paying for the journey with her body. And boy, did she! The love boat got to Jerusalem, and she immediately set out to find prospective lovers. On the feast day of the elevation of the life-giving cross, she saw many people flock to the church to receive a blessing. She entered the churchyard, but try as she might, she couldn't enter the church. Thinking this is due to the large crowds of pilgrims pushing her to and fro, she tried again and again, but she could never get over the doorstep. She started to wonder why is this so? and she got illumined by the interior light of the Lord. Her sins were preventing her from entering the church. She started to weep bitterly and lament over her past life. She then noticed an icon of the Most Holy Theotokos through the doorframe, and she vowed that she would repent of her past misdeeds, begging the Most Holy Mother of God to let her see the wood of the cross. Then she entered the church without issue, trembling with fear. She venerated the Most Holy Cross, and as she was leaving, she thanked the Mother of God. Immediately she heard a voice. If you cross over the Jordan River, you will find good peace. Listening to the instruction, she went in that direction. On her way, she was stopped by a mysterious stranger who insisted that she take three coins from him. With that money, she bought three loaves of bread. Near sunset, she reached the church of St. John the Baptist next to the river. She washed her face and hands with its water and partook of the Holy Communion in the church. After a full night's rest, she entered the desert. For 47 years, this titan of an ascetic dwelled in the harsh environment. 
The clothes she wore rotted away to nothingness, and she suffered greatly due to the elements. The bread she obtained did not last long, and she fed on desert vegetation, with demons assaulting her mind with images of meat and fish she had often while in Egypt. The flashpots of Egypt weren't enough for the spiritual fiends, but they also prompted her to sing the vile tower songs, and evoked images of her many affairs. She constantly missed her favorite drink, wine, and she could barely find any water to drink. When these foul temptations came, she would weep, strike her breast, remember the vow that she made, and imagine herself before that icon of the Teotokos, begging for her help. For seventeen years did she fight a difficult battle, but God would send her consolations, and finally she was saved from the temptations of the flesh. However, the Lord did not stop at this, but he also taught her the Psalms and the books of the scripture, for once she entered the desert, she saw neither man nor beast. The lady requested of St. Zosimus that next year he should not come to the desert as according to the monastery rule, a marvel itself, for she could not have known what monastic practice demanded of the monks there, but that he should bring her holy mysteries of the body and blood of Christ on Great Thursday, when the Church celebrates the institution of the Eucharist, for she had not partook of the dread mysteries ever since she entered the desert. They were supposed to meet at the bank of the Jordan River. Saint Zosimus did as he was told, and on the day of Great Thursday he put the most pure body and most precious blood of Christ our God in a small basket, as well as some dates and lentils. He waited for the saint at the river's shore, and he pondered how she would cross the water. As he was pondering that, he saw the woman make the sign of the cross over the river and walk over it as it were dry land. He was so astounded that he immediately wanted to bow down to her, but she rebuked him most sternly, saying that it is improper for him to bow to anyone as he is carrying the holy mysteries of the Lord. When she came, she asked him to recite the Creed and the Lord's Prayer. Afterwards, she partook of the Holy Communion. Then she gave him her final request, that they should meet in a year by the brook they first saw each other. She crossed the river again and disappeared in the desert. Saint Zosimus was completely dejected, for he did not learn the name of the Venerable One, but hoped to learn of it next year. Next year he did go, and upon coming to the brook he saw the body of the saint, dead, with her hands crossed over her chest. Next to her, in ground, was a writing. Bury, Father Zosimus, in this spot the body of humble Mary, and surrender dust to dust. Pray unto the Lord for me, for I have died on the 1st of April, on the eve of the salvific Passion of Christ, after I have received the communion of the Divine Mysteries. The old man could not stop rejoicing at learning the name of the Venerable Saint. He tried to bury Saint Mary, but the ground was too dry. Then he saw a huge lion approaching, and the animal licked the feet of the departed saint. Making the sign of the cross, St. Zosimus bid the lion to dig the rake, and it obeyed. They buried the saint and went their separate ways. St. Zosimus returned to his monastery, and he died at ripe old age of 100 years, spreading the story of Venerable Mary far and wide. By their prayers, O Lord, Save us and have mercy on us. Amen.